All right. All right. This question states, what is the name? What is the name of the functional group containing the external oxygen on each ring of the MCS structures shown in figure one? All right. Let's look at figure one. The external oxygens. They're likely talking about these guys right here, right? And so this is just a discrete. You do need to know what these structures are called. They are not aldehydes. They're not carboxylic acids. They're not esters. They are ketones, okay? Right? These are aldehydes. Aldehydes have to have a hydrogen attached to the carbon with the oxygen. Carboxylic acids, you guys should know, is this, something in the form of this. Esters, okay, that's going to be something in the form of this. Okay, and ketones, that's when you have a carbon double bond to an oxygen and they're connected to things that are not hydrogens. Okay, um, like this. I should put a prime right there. All right, so just remember, keep these uh, functional groups in mind for the MCAT. Very, very important. Um, this should be, you should know these like the back of your hand. Based on reaction one, when one ATM of CO completely reacts to form carbon suboxide at 550 degrees Celsius in a sealed container. What is the final pressure in the container? Okay, so there's a short way and a fast way to do this, or a short way and a longer way to do this. I'm gonna show you the longer way and then I'll go over the short way, um, just so that we can be clear about which one makes more sense to you guys. So the long way, so PV equals NRT, right? This is a gas equation. This should be the first thing that should, uh, pops up in your mind, the ideal gas equation. All right, so we have a pressure. Now, what do we know about this container? This container is never gonna change volume. So volume is gonna be this constant. We can just leave it at P. Um, equals nrt. So what are we doing when we convert everything? So this is the initial condition before everything changes. What happens in the second condition? Let's take a look. When all of this, okay, becomes a gas, what happens? You're actually forming uh, two moles of gas. So every four moles of gas, you're forming two moles of gas on the right side here. So uh, whatever happens, the number of moles of gas that we had initially, we're going to have that. So what does that mean? On the right side of the equation, n is actually going to be 1 half, because we're actually dividing the number of moles of gas by 2. Okay, And so what does that mean for the left side? For the left side to hold true, that means the left side also has to be halved, right? Well, volume has to stay constant, so the only you know uh, variable on the left side that can be halved is going to be pressure. And that's, again, because we know that the number of moles of gas is going to be half of what it was originally due to the equation that we had before, meaning that the pressure on the left side of the equation, given that volume stays constant, has to be halved as well. Um, we don't have to worry about R and T. This is just to show this, this relationship here. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And so what does that mean? If we had originally one ATM of the carbon uh, monoxide as gas, then the pressure now is going to be half of that, which is now 0 0.5 atm. The faster way to think about this is just same thing, just faster the way, uh, faster way, quicker way without writing the equation would be, hey, we have one atm of this carbon monoxide gas. Um, we're going to basically take away half of that gas since we're only forming half the moles of gas, and that intuitively tells you that the moles of gas or the pressure is going to be half of what it was originally. So it's the same idea, just without writing the equation. Let's move on to the next question here. It says, in which phase? or in which phases will the MCS precursor be predominantly found after the extraction step? The MCS precursor will blank. All right, so what is an extraction? Extractions um, generally look like generally look like this. You have this, um, I forgot what the flask is called. I believe it's like a funnel flask. And you have like a stopcock right here. All right, and then you have this fluid. Now because there's you know uh, two different densities of the two different liquids or fluids that are in here, you have two separate layers. One's going to be the organic layer, one's going to be the aqueous layer, and depending on your um, product, it's going to be dissolved in either the aqueous layer or the organic layer. I'll just put the organic layer there. Um, it's not always ordered like this, I just have it drawn out like this right now. Um, and it says the MCS precursor, or I guess the, I think usually the organic layer is on top, but it doesn't matter too much right now. The MCS precursor will blank. So what is the MCS precursor? Let's see. MCS precursors are lipophilic. So what does that mean? Lipophilic means they like organic layers, right? They're fat soluble. So if they're fat soluble, they're not going to dissolve in the aqueous layer. They're going to dissolve in the organic layer. Remember, like, likes, like. Um, what that means is um, uh, hydrophilic molecules will dissolve in aqueous layers, um, but not the organic layer. And lipophilic molecules will dissolve in the organic layer and not the aqueous layer. So it's not going to be, this precursor won't be found in the aqueous layer. 
it's not going to be distributed equally. As I said, it's going to only dissolve in one of the two. And it's definitely not going to form a precipitate um, between the two layers. That's just some kind of made up um, answer choice there. Uh, the is a lipophilic molecule. It's going to be hard for that to form precipitate. And so it's going to be found in the organic layer, which is the terp butyl methyl ether layer. This is um, a, a hydrophobic layer. It's not going to be hydrophilic. It's not going to want to make, uh, or it's not going to dissolve in the aqueous layer. Um, let me see if there's like, um, yeah, here we go. There's, here's the, uh, here's the formula for that layer. And you can tell a lot of hydrocarbons, it's only an ether bond, not going to make, it's not going to make it very hydrophilic, meaning this is the organic layer they're talking about. Thus, this lipophilic molecule, this precursor will be found in the organic layer. All right, let's all right, let's move on to the next question here. It says, based on figure two, what is the approximate Ki of the MCS oligomers? Remember, the MCS oligomers in this in this uh, passage, they're inhibitors. Okay, they're inhibitors of this ATPase. Um, the ability of the MCS M, the ability of the MCS oligomers to inhibit ATPase was determined. All right, so remember, MCS they are the inhibitors. So what is Ki? Ki. This is a definition you need to know. Is the concentration of inhibitor you need to reduce the specific activity um, the end of an enzyme by half. All right, so what does that mean? We're looking at, you know, basically without, essentially without any of the um, when negligible amounts of the inhibitor, you're going to be at full capacity here. And then by the time you reach this point here, this is the 0 0.5 mark, you've lost 50% of your activity by this point. So it's, it's basically asking, what is the concentration at this point? So that's like the hardest part. The hardest part of knowing uh, this question is knowing what Ki is. And again, that's the concentration of the inhibitor you need to reduce the specific activity of an enzyme by half, or half the specific activity of an enzyme. So what's half right here? That's going to be over here. What's the concentration of the inhibitor? Well, it's going to follow this down. Looks like it's around here. Uh, my line's a little crooked, meaning that's 0 0.03 micromolar. Now. All of these uh, answer choices are in units of nanomolar. So remember, uh, there's 10 to the negative 6 is the um, molar is the same as the micromolar. 10 to the negative 9 is the same for the nanomolars. Right? This is what the conversions turn out to be. So to basically get nan uh, micromolar into nanomolar, you do have to multiply this number by 1,000. If you multiply that by 1,000, let me do the math out here. There's 1,000 nanomolar per micromolar, right? And you cross out these uh, units, you would get 30 nanomolar, meaning 30 is going to be the answer for this question. So what's the next question here? It says, based on the reported Hill coefficient, in what way do the MCS oligomers affect inhibition? So basically, what kind of inhibitors are they? Um, or I guess, what mechanism? Um, it says... The Hill coefficient is going to be 2.56 stated in the passage. So what does that mean? So um, you do need to know what the Hill coefficient is. Basically, the Hill coefficient will range from 0 to, oh, there we go, 0 to 1 to greater than 1, okay? Um, oops, let's do that. So what does that mean? If it's 1, that means there is going, uh, this is a measure of basically cooperativity. If the Hill's coefficient is 1, no cooperativity. Okay, if it's greater than one, greater than one, that means it's going to be positive cooperativity. And if it's between zero and one, that's going to be negative cooperativity. There is no Hill's coefficient below one, or below zero, sorry. It doesn't go negative. So what are positive and negative cooperativity? Positive cooperativity means when the inhibitor binds, it's going to allow for um, other inhibitors to bind more easily. Okay, so once the first inhibitor binds onto the enzyme, other inhibitors can bind onto the enzyme um, basically more easily than the first one did. Negative cooperativity, cooperativity is the opposite of that. Basically, when the first inhibitor binds, it's going to prevent or make it harder for the other subsequent inhi inhibitors to bind onto the same enzyme. So that is the idea of positive and negative cooperativity. So because it's greater than 1, remember it was 2.56, we're looking for something that describes positive cooperativity here. What does that mean? So it says, A, as one uh, MCS oligomer binds to the ATPs, it makes it easier for the others to bind, leading to inhibition. That looks like positive cooperativity. B, uh, makes it more difficult for the others to bind. That looks like negative inhibition. 
a single MCS linear binds to the ATPS linear inhibition. Well, we do know there's cooperativity because the Hill's coefficient is greater than one, meaning it can't just be one. There has to be, there could be, uh, and there likely is multiple or are multiple inhibitors binding. And MCS linear randomly bind to the ATPS linear inhibition. This is not really um, relevant to the uh, the Hill's coefficient at all. Um, yeah, not exactly sure <laughs> where this, this answer choice is going. Not relevant to the Hill's coefficient, not making it D.